conference, this is largely to the medical community, not generally for the common public unless they can make what I am going to talk about. This is more or less technical and uh, this aims to look at the recent things of Corona, the COVID-19 strain, in the perspective of how Ayurveda would relate to it. The slides that would appear somewhere on the screen, they would try to look at the biochemical physiology of uh, COVID-19 with an Ayurvedic perspective and establish the relevance of Ayurvedic principles to this epidemic. Now, when we look at it, uh, the first thing that is thought is that of a virus, the virus as to what character it is. We all know that a virus would only be effective if it uh, could be a part of a living cell, if it could enter the living cell and uh, then uh, probably act. That means to enter the living cell, it has to join somewhere onto the cell, it has to attach itself onto the cell. This has always been known to be a subject which is dependent on the nature of virus. This group of viruses, the corona group of viruses, is largely a glycoproteinous uh, substrate. So uh, that means the polypeptide chain has a carbohydrate chain attached to it. What has been learnt of past experiences with SARS-Corona and has also been uh, observed or postulated a uh, basis of preliminary observations is that the virus attaches to the cell membrane of the cell of the lung tissue at a site <clears throat> which is identified as ACE2 or angiotensin converting enzyme 2 site and once it attaches there from there the DNA of uh, the virus enters the cell. Now this site uh, that is known to be the prime focus where uh, the virus attaches it suggests that at this point the virus has a spike end and this spike end, this S spike end is where, where from it attaches to the ACE inhibitor, the ACE enzyme site. When it attaches, it uh, breaks down into two components, S1 and S2. And S1 is the primary uh, one which helps bind. S2 is believed to cause the fusion of uh, adjacent cells and uh, making the single cell macro uh, in size also having a bigger nucleus with more polypeptide chains inside and all active RNAs, those of the COVID. If I were to look at this, uh, this has two subunits and uh, the other subunit, the, the functional subunit as far as attachment is concerned is being labeled as an RBD unit or the receptor binding uh, site. Now, when I look at these uh, sites, these, uh, the point where they attach to the ACE enzyme site on the cell membrane has been labeled as a GRP78 site. And uh, this virus attaches in more than one way. It attaches in three different ways, which is uh, shown on these uh, slides on these labels that you have right on your screen and uh, if I were to say then the cyan color as uh, is one of the things then there is a red surface which is region 4 then uh, there is another proposed recognition mode uh, which is in red uh, color and then there is a green through which the spike protein uh, actually enters or is the spike region. <coughs> Going by further, if I have to uh, come to a conclusion, I would first want to draw an understanding as to what happens. What happens is, I would consider this as a tissue level shock, a tissue level trauma that happens. And when it happens, the lipoprotein structure of the cell 
which would be primarily to say a base of Pit, Agni and Akash primarily being Prithvi, Prithvi and Prithvi largely more or less a hydrophobic structure when it combines or when it is hit by a traumatic uh, subject as this virus which uh, is in a sense to understand as trauma physiologically bad it would cause a distortion in the lipoprotein structure which has been labeled as liquefaction of the structure liquefaction of the cell and fusion of the cells now uh, this fusion is definitely definitely going to bring about some changes within the cell environment and these would be potentially of a character where water would set in so Jal Mahabhut comes into play and along with this dilution with the presence of a cationic say, uh, stream an acidophilic environment an acidic environment sets in this uh, acidic environment allows formation of edema as heat is released now we will further observe in the slides going down that uh, this attachment has been labeled to be uh, to say an endothermic reaction which means it is drawing heat from all around its environment and if something is drawing heat from around it is going to precipitate cold, precipitate uh, a lowering of temperatures which in Ayurvedic parlance is considered to be domination of Jal Mahabhu, domination of uh, Akash and definitely diminution of Agni. So as a reaction what will happen is there are bound to be such changes that will reflect as formation of things which are liquid, which are cold in nature and this can be labelled or this has been conventionally understood also that uh, the understanding of mucus, the understanding of mucilage uh, that is a cuff as it is known within the lungs is nothing but this translation. We also know that as part of this physiological chemistry what happens is before this uh, infection is recognized you come to find that you have mucus generated you have clogging of air spaces and along with as has been repeated the fusion of uh, cells around into a bigger cell now if i were to consider this again coming back to modern science uh, this particular slide uh, shows that the binding mode of each of the docking trays that means the binding mode of each of the uh, spikes where they attach to the ACE enzyme is with a, labeled with a green carbon and yellow. Now COVID-19 when it attaches it, uh, it is very much very, uh, mentioned here that these experiments also <clears throat> found that it was consuming 9.8 to 14 kilocalories per mole of uh, energy. In terms of orientation, uh, what happens is the region 3 and region 4 of this uh, spike as they attach to ACE, they create a situation where they, there are two more spikes available. So uh, the same virus singularly or the same uh, antigen singularly is able to infect at more than one cells or in other words it is able to add more than uh, one uh, cells to a single large cell so uh, the, the fusion the reason for fusion happens also uh, because of this multiple uh, spikes probably also it can be said that uh, probably this fusion uh, is again leading to more consumption of energy or uh, drawing of energy from the surroundings but it definitely establishes that the ACE2 enzyme at this point also undergoes certain changes and it dimerizes. It uh, instead of being a single molecule becomes a dimer and that dimer provides two uh, sites where this virus can attach by itself. So 
the resulting picture is a very complex picture and uh, if I were to just reflect back on to the result that happens is a huge uh, lake of mucus is getting created within which large cells uh, formed by the fusion of these parenchymal cells of the lung are floating around. The mucus is closing the uh, or clogging the air spaces. The uh, huge cells are just floating around with uh, carrying the viral activity within themselves. And beyond a certain point, these viral spaces definitely burst out. So this that is resulting because of a cationic proteasal enzyme or metalloproteasal enzyme activity, which is leading to acidophilic environment which is lowering the pH if there is an activity which is T cell mediated which is supposed to be an immune response and uh, that immune response would be Pitvatajin activity it would result in two things first the Pitvataj impact the immune activity leads to generation of heat and that is once the immune system starts producing antibodies you have this sense of fever coming up. So there's a huge gap, there's a huge time gap, two to three weeks uh, roughly, at least two weeks, until this activity of the body comes into action. And until this activity comes into action, you don't have this realization that you're carrying something. It is only the first effects of a raised temperature that arise at two to three weeks of a time interval. When you look at this, objective, when you find this objective, this has a very strong relevance with the concept of immunity and that is what is going to play somewhere as a role if you want to use antivirals uh, or antiretrovirals as ARDs have been used in some cases as reported or develop a vaccine. Now, uh, one must look at what happens to the lungs uh, in this picture as I have been speaking all this while. And this picture is a clear reflection as to how this S protein breaks down, how this uh, coalesces, how this leads to fusion of cells, how uh, changes happen within the lung space and how damaging it can be. Now, coming to this, the binding activity of the T cell membrane with ACE2 receptors is uh, to summarize, a metalloproteasal activity leading to cationic changes. This leads to an acidic environment causing mitochondrial and oxidative stress. Coming to Ayurvedic perspectives of treatments, it is recognized that most Ayurvedic medicines which are known to have an antiviral impact are also alkaline and also antioxidants in activity. Therefore, antiviral drugs in combination with antioxidants probably will be a better remedy and a better protection which is probably uh, why uh, there is also a continuous feed about uptake of uh, vitamin C as one of the uh, major supports. In short one can say that T cells will or have been recognized to increase in number, neutrophils do decrease but T cells the primary immune response system which fights increases in an alkaline environment and to stimulate an ARV and to stimulate a vaccine to be able to function probably this will be an added and assisted environment that can help create. The end of the uh, slides will have a few references that I have used uh, going through to decide to talk on this subject. I know uh, I have tried to rush through this and therefore uh, there might be points that are not really touched upon or there might be points that are just breezed through. I expect the listeners to come up with their questions on this presentation and discuss. Thank you.